What was that? Bro? <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Before we even get into that, who gave that nigga that much camera time? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of On Second Thought, where we talk about NBA basketball. So if you like NBA basketball, this is definitely the show for you. I'm your host, Tramel Jeffers, and I have my crew with me. We have Lance Blesso, my guy, and then my other guy, Jerome Bradford II. How y'all doing today, man? Pretty good, doing man. Doing great on this Saturday morning, yeah. man. A very bright and early. That's <laughs> cool. <laughs> As y'all know, it's a very special holiday in the African-American community today. It is Juneteenth, and that is our Independence Day. You know, everybody celebrates July 4th, America's independence from Great Britain in 1775. But if we're being real, that holiday wasn't for us. We weren't free at the time. We were still worth, we were still counted as three-fifths of a person. So that's not our holiday. Our holiday is Juneteenth. 1865. That's when we got our independence. So this is a very important and a very special holiday. So we're going to celebrate it today. And the question is, whose house are we going over? Lance, is it going to be your house? Is it going to be yours, Jerome? Where, where's the cookout at today? That's what I need to know. Whoever cook is that? But, oh, hey, you get a plate from everybody out. You feel me? Got you, got you. So we, we're going to talk about multiple houses today. Okay, okay. We need multiple <laughs> places today. That's how you know it's you really going you can't, just go, you can't just go to one house. You got to go to one Oh, God. You got <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, you. Got you. All right. We're going we gonna to kind of keep it in the same area mm -hmm. with the African-American topic. And we're going to talk about NBA head coaches. And I want to ask you all, should the NBA prioritize hiring black coaches this offseason? Yes, most definitely. Because it's some – very great black coaches that are assistant coaches that have been waiting for a chance to be head coach for a long time in this league. And it's like they don't get a shot. Like, for example, like Steve Nash. Steve Nash never coached a day in his life. And then, boom, he get the job playing coach of the Nets, one of the best teams in the league, when healthy. And it's like if they was to be fully healthy and they was to win it all this year, it will make them look like he's just – the best coach in the league when it's really not that you're just coaching for a good team so i feel like yes black coaches should get that opportunity as well like and it's and most of the league i, I ain't it like 90 percent of the league is black of, of yeah. players so yeah. black coaches should be coaching those players too that's just how i feel i feel like it should be like that what you think jerome man I'm with Lance, man. We just need more representation because I was just looking at the statistics. And ironically, I thought it was about 90%, but they said we about like 75% black in the league. Now, I guess we've been having more European talent, overseas talent flooded. But besides, that's besides the point, though. The league is 75% black, and it's only 23% of the coaches that are black. So where is the representation in this? Now, I mean, like, there are a lot of very prominent candidates like Chauncey Billups. Sam Cassell has been an assistant coach forever. I mean, David Vanderpool is another assistant coach that got skipped over on the Minnesota Timberwolves job. And I just think that it's time for a change, just like he was saying with Steve Nash. Like, he just got a job out the blue, so... You can't tell me that Chauncey Billis doesn't deserve a job. They pretty much have the same resume. So besides that, like, I just want more representation overall because 23% of the league, 23% um, um, black coach ratio is not good, man. So we really need to have an uptick in that. But not I feel as though, like there has been a little bit of priority. If I don't know if y'all heard, but they said Chauncey was getting some looks. I think Sam Cassell, so hopefully it's a little bit of turnover, but you just never know, man. But shout out to Monty Williams, though. Dwayne Casey, know what I mean? Um, Nate McMillan. Doc Rivers, know mm -hmm. what I mean? And uh, am I forgetting one? No, I'm not forgetting. Steven Silas, 
Yeah. Uh, I think I think that's is that it? I think, I think that's it. That's all I can remember. Yeah. I think that's yeah. it. I'm gonna have to agree with y'all. I think they should make it a priority this offseason. If you look at the playoffs right now, you have three head coaches that are still in the playoffs. Doc Rivers, their team is still in the playoffs right now. You also have the Clippers head coach, Tyron Lue, still in the playoffs. Oh, yeah. uh, yes, I'm missing one more, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I think Ty Lue is the only one missing. Oh, Nate McMillan. Nate Wait, McMillan, that's another one. They're still in the playoffs. So you yeah. have three head coaches that are still playing in the conference semifinals right now. Mm -hmm. So I think they definitely should give these guys a, an opportunity, a fair opportunity. And I think with the NBA, the thing is – some they're they're allowing the black coaches to come in and, and get the jobs, but is it fair though? You it's see, right. Nate McMillan he got fired after what was it one year in Indiana? They didn't have a fair shot to win against Miami. They dealt with injuries. Their best player was out that series, and he got fired. Tyron Lue when LeBron James left, he got fired the very next year for, for no reason. I mean, they were they were set up to fail, and they weren't given a shot to to stay like a. A Brad Stevens, you see, he's still there. Rick Carlisle, he's been there forever. They gave so, Stevie Silas the worst team in the league, bro. Exactly, yeah. So I think when it comes to African American head coaches in the NBA, we're just not given the fair shot. We're able to get the job, but we don't get any leeway as some of the other coaches would that are different races in the NBA. So and that's, we get that that's part ways tag. If we if we get fired, we just get fired. A white coach get fired. Parted ways. Parted ways. Exactly. exactly. And, they, and they found a new job right back like that. Right like that. <laughs> so I, I think it just needs to be, I think they need to give the black head coaches an equal opportunity in the same leeway that they would for a Caucasian head coach in the NBA. So that's that's what I feel about it. So I see we all agree on that topic. And representation. So we right. asked for Exactly. Now let's talk about the NBA playoffs and Man, it's been very interesting this year. I Honestly, I've enjoyed it. I really have. You know, last year everybody complained about the bubble, but now things are slowly getting back to normal. You got the crowds in the stands again, very intense playoff games. It's, it's been awesome to see. So I want to ask both of y'all, what's been the, the biggest storyline in the playoffs so far? Man, honestly – after watching a couple games, I wanted to say something, but I'm going to have to go ahead and say the injuries, man. Mm. I mean, that injury bug has been crazy. It's It's been leading to some historical performances, though. But honestly, like, just the product they putting on the floor is not what you would typically want to see around this time, you know? I mean, kudos to everybody that's going crazy, but just from a fan standpoint, I know – we would definitely want just this recent uptick in injuries to, you know, go down. But, of course, it's because the season started early. But it's kind of up and down, though, if you look at the injuries and stuff like that. Because some teams, you know, had like a year break. And then some teams just had to immediately go back. And if you see who's hurt with Kawhi, um, I mean, Donovan got hurt a little bit. But, I mean, they lost in the first round, so. It's kind of how you look at it. You could say some teams stayed a little longer and some teams just had that unfortunate injury bug. So, uh, I mean, I mean, like Philly, um, they, didn't, they got swept last year. So, yeah, and they too long and Joel and B's hurt, stuff like that. So, you can't – it's hard to really put your finger on it because it's not one sole reason for it. But, honestly, I'm going to say, yeah, the injuries to me, like, damn, it's been crazy. Okay, Lance, what you got? Man, my biggest, the, big, the most surprising storyline to me is these comebacks, bro. Mm. <laughs> like, it's literally been happening oh, every yeah. game. Like, yeah. like, a team could be up 20 points. That don't mean nothing at all. Like, it doesn't mean nothing at all. And we seen that last night, last night between the Clippers and the Jazz. Like, like, it, like it's just been, been these comebacks. Like, for example, like, the first round with the Clippers and the Mavericks, we all thought the Clippers was done. And then the Clippers came back and ended up winning the series. And they ended up winning the series against the Jazz. And even with the Nets and the Bucks, it's been going back and forth. It like the Bucks been having these big leagues and then the Nets just come back, come back in the game and, and they mm -hmm. win. Like so tonight's game, 
I don't I don't know who to who to go for really. Like if the Bucks be up 20, it the game is not over. You, right. The game ain't right. over till it's over. The series isn't over till it's over. So really, my biggest storyline is really these comebacks. Like it's just been surprising this whole playoffs. It, it ain't been no no out games. It ain't been no one sided games. Everything just been um comebacks, really. Really, really. Just been comebacks. I like that. And then you can't forget the Atlanta Hawks come back in game five against Philadelphia. <laughs> and speaking of the Atlanta Hawks, that's my biggest storyline of the playoffs. Nobody expected the Atlanta Hawks to be tied up with the Philadelphia 76ers in the second round, 3-3. Nobody. Y'all disrespected me. I, I told you all this before the playoffs even started. I said the Atlanta Hawks will go to the Eastern Conference Finals. I got mocked, I got scorned, ridiculed by my family, friends, y'all. I mean, everybody I knew laughed at me when I said this back in, in March. And when they played the Knicks in the first round, nobody gave them a shot. Everybody said Knicks and six. Then they go to the second round against Philly. Everybody says Philly and five. Oh, they tied three, three with an opportunity to go to the Eastern Conference Finals. And they're doing this without DeAndre Hunter. And – that's my biggest storyline, man, because nobody gave them a shot. And for a second, I had a little doubt in my mind because everybody just just wrote them off. And I thought I was a little delusional. I thought I was being a fanboy. I, I, I didn't know if I didn't know if I was just being delusional, being a fanboy. I, I didn't know. <laughs> it, I had some doubt in my mind, but wait, 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 I wait. that they reached the potential that I knew I, they could. Nobody I thought this it was gonna be this bad. Hey, Nobody, hold on, hold on, did, did you hold think on, Seth, did you think Seth Curry was be, gonna be the second best player in the playoffs for the 76ers? I didn't, but I didn't expect the Atlanta Hawks. Exactly. Nobody my exactly. Atlanta Hawks. So. I hear you. I hear you, but hold on. You you weren't the only Hawk supporter. Nah, yeah, I mean like Hawks I didn't bad. say they were that far, but it's not like I didn't pick them in nothing. I did say they beat the Knicks. I ain't have them going this far. I had them losing about seven games to, to Philly, but Nah, I mean, I it's not I ain't believe in them. You you can't say nobody. I just halfway believed in them. Okay, I will give you that, but okay. the fans just completely wrote me off. <laughs> but now, man, we sadly we got to move on to the hot takes. Ah, God, man, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go first. Uh, first. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm doing it. I'm doing it, man. I'm doing. It. I need that. I'm doing it, man. I did that because I was I was drunk. Remember, I was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I did so, that. Uh, my win streak has come to an end, sadly. And before I take my shot of hot sauce, everybody from the Clipper Nation to our executive producer, Mr. Ryan Aubrey, I want to give you all an apology. I wrote y'all off. I laughed at y'all. I mean, I talked bad about y'all. I said y'all had no chance. I said y'all were a bum franchise. I said y'all were the Cleveland Browns of the NBA. And I was wrong. Congratulations, you all made it to your first Western Conference Finals in franchise history. And I wish you all the best. So because I was wrong, I gotta take a shot of hot sauce. My first one. Didn't plan on taking one this season, but ah, all streaks will come to an end. So here we go. Yes, sir. And if y'all looking at this, man, I'm not a Clipper fan, but I just made a good prediction. So don't kill me, Laker Nation. <laughs> the name of the game is making hot takes. You see my boy. Thank you. Welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. We still say goodbye. Nobody. But it's cool. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still All right. So, Jerome, what's your hot take now? You go ahead and give us your hot take for this week. Well, since I have arrived... The magnificent TD money. And I just can't let y'all know that y'all haven't been doing what we agreed to do. When we started this here at Polaris, we agreed that we would make one of the best shows that the people have ever seen. We agreed that we would make this show polarizing. We agreed that we would all make sense. And y'all haven't been doing that. Y'all haven't even said something that's like, oh, oh, nothing, nothing, nothing hasn't happened. And I just can't let y'all know that I'm here for that. I'm the flair that's been missing. I'm the spice, nigga. I'm the motherfucking sauce, nigga. I'm everything, nigga. I'm the seasoning, bitch. So I can let y'all know two things. Two things. You feel me? One, the Eastern Conference Finals will be the 76ers versus the Bucks. And 
The 76ers will take whoever out of the West, whoever, you name it, out of the West. Chris Paul, punk ass, uh, the hoe ass Clippers, they'll take whoever, whoever out of the West and take it back to Philly. My nigga Bean. That's how we doing it this year, boy. Joel and Bean, them is coming. I promise you. Watch out. Watch out. I've been out here at Duncan working motherfucking full time shit. I'm a goddamn store manager. Y'all been out here bullshitting, bullshitting on the guy on the goddamn show. So I can't let y'all know true facts. So have a good day, people. Ease up. What was that? Wait, wait, wait. Before we even get into that, who gave that nigga that much camera time? Who yeah, was this guy? As soon as he said, soon as he said 76 is out, I should have just cut him off right there. <laughs> that drunk ass nigga out of here. I forgot who. Damn, is that my cue? Damn, that's how I get intro- TV introduced to cut me off? Y'all got me fucked up for that shit, dude. Don't ever have that nigga talk over me. But shit, man. Before I got humbly interrupted, um, yeah, I was going to say, we seen Playoff Pete cooking. So we seen Devin Booker call him a soft ass. You know what? A couple. So I need that. And I got Devin Booker as being the best player in the series, man. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. In the Western Conference Finals. Okay. Yeah. I mean, CP out. Okay. Kawhi out. LOL. <laughs> you LOL all my hot takes. I mean, that's when you had to, you know what I mean? So, I, only, I only did one. That's my last one of the season. Go ahead, Lance. You. I hope you have something better. Okay, so we all had seen the news with CP3 with him being on COVID-19 with all that. My hot take is CP3 will play at least one game in the Western Conference Finals. At least one game. Simply because they, they, they've they been saying if he's going to miss games, the most he's going to miss is at least two or three. Because if if you if he does have it, he's going to at least be like out for like a week or two. And if it's a week, then he's going to be able to play at least one game. So I, I don't see CP3 staying, being out the whole, the whole, uh, Series, if, even if it's game four or game five, he gonna at least play one game in the series. That's my hot take. That's not a hot take. That's like, what I'm saying. Bro, what is that? Are you serious? So then we play one game, you you get bailed out. No, no. But if he missed the whole, but if he missed the whole series, he gonna be like, oh, let's take the take a take a shot of hot sauce. Nah, that's a hot take for sure. Why is that's that a hot take? No, that's I'm not. Y'all bad because I'll make a sport take. Y'all bad because I'll make a sport take. Y'all bad because I'll make a sport take. I'm going to give a real hot take. I'm going to give a real hot take. That's a hot take. I made a real that's hot, 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 hot take. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not like you, Trap. I'm just that's cool. cool. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Here comes a real hot take. The Los Angeles Clippers. First time in the Western Conference Finals. No Kawhi Leonard. He's most likely out. We don't know the status of his injury. So it's time for playoff P to step up. And he did that in the last series. No more playoff P Splendor. I think he's proved himself. And I think he's going to continue to do that in this series against the Phoenix Suns. He's going to be the MVP of this series. Not Devin Booker. Paul George. Mr. Paul George. He's going to show you why he is a superstar. And he's going to average 30 points, eight rebounds, and five assists. And he's going to win that series. And they're going to the NBA Finals. You heard it here first. You'll be taking more. Oh, so you just wanted to just dispute my take. Oh, I see why you was laughing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, we're going to see. Well, one of them is going to be taking taking more hot sauce for sure. Somebody's going to be drinking some hot sauce for sure. I don't know about Lance. He got this lukewarm take. We're going to make him. Bring another one, so yeah, yeah, yeah. he'll through. be back next week. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely get him to take some hot sauce. Take fast, take. You know that nigga look both, both ways yeah. in the street. But yeah, we'll come back and we'll see how it goes next week. But we'll everybody in the audience, I appreciate you all for watching. We really do appreciate it. Leave a comment in the comment section. Leave a like and hit that subscribe button. And we'll be back next week. Stay tuned. This Happy Juneteenth, too. Yes, Happy Juneteenth. Yes, For exclusive shows and premium content, subscribe to the Polaris Network on Patreon.